So with this new recent explosion of all these new trading card games entering the scene, it's very hard to decide which ones you want to back. If you're a player, if you're a collector, if you're an investor, it really doesn't matter. There's just so many different choices. Maybe you like the style of the game. Maybe you like the story and the characters in the game and you just gravitate towards certain ones. Maybe you like anime, so you gravitate towards Grand Archive. Maybe you like Pokemon, so you gravitate more towards like D-Spirits or MetaZoo or Poliwog. Maybe you like that gritty like fantasy style, so you gravitate more towards Flesh and Blood or Sorcery or Cryptic. There's a lot of different reasons why you may back a game over other ones, but trying to decide which ones are going to survive, it's very difficult to do. And the reality is most of these games are probably going to fail. And just like me, I'm sure a lot of you have chosen your losers, chosen your winners, kind of stayed away from the ones you didn't like. But are we actually going to be correct at the end of the day? And that's the question. And a lot of people aren't really asking this question and addressing this question on YouTube, to be completely honest. And I wanted to put out my two cents, my thoughts on the matter. Because as of right now, I think a lot of people are expecting that a lot of these games are going to survive. And they look at MetaZoo and they go, well, that justifies it right there. MetaZoo took off. There's no reason why this game couldn't take off. But the reality is Meta MetaZoo was like a one-off event. It's not going to happen very often. It's just not going to happen. And you look at that and yes, it blew through the roof. Hype was all over the place, but it did have its moments where it crashed. But the thing about MetaZoo is it's held its own. It always hits a certain point and then just consistently continues to ride down that path. But a lot of these other games are not going to be able to survive. There's a huge backing behind MetaZoo. They're trying to be an IP. Most of these other games are not trying to do that. And it just tells you they're going to fail. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but that's kind of the truth. I don't know which ones. I have my opinions, but I don't know which ones. Something I have noticed, I don't know if a lot of other people have noticed this, but there's a few games right now in particular that are getting pumped to the moon. Uh, a couple months ago, it was Maelstrom. Now, it's Otherverse and it's Cryptic. Personally, I don't like Maelstrom. I don't really like Otherverse. I think it's very derivative. I've seen some of the artwork. It reminds me of Napoleon Dynamite's artwork, at least initially on the Kickstarter. It looked pretty bad. Just some of the faces just looked off. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of it. To be personally honest with you, I don't like like that Eastern-style design. This is a display of the cards. They kind of look like Dragon Ball Super. I'm not a fan of it. I like that Western design standard look to most of my cards. And I don't like all that flashiness. There's just too much going on with it. To each their own. If you like it, it is what it is. But in my opinion, I don't really like Otherverse. But right now, it's blowing up through the roof. And Cryptic is also blowing up. I'm also not a huge fan of Cryptic. I think out of all the games, it probably has the most potential. But I feel like most people that like Magic are probably just going to stick with Flesh and Blood or go on to Sorcery. So Cryptic is kind of stuck in that middle zone. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And when I look at the design of the cards, as you can see right here on the screen... I'm just not a fan of it. I don't know why they decided to put these ovals here instead of making those circles. Because to me, it just looks like everything's been squished. And now you have these stretched out elongated numbers in that center bar right there and at the bottom. Every single time I look at this card, that's what my eyes are drawn to. And it just looks amateurish to me. It doesn't, say, it doesn't mean you can't put ovals in your design. But when I see that, it just looks like it's stretched. MetaZoo did the same exact thing when they made their serialized cards. For some reason, they put the most hideous font on there for those serialized numbers. And it just looks like it's stretched out numbers that are squished, stretched. It just looks very amateurish. It doesn't you know, go with the rest of the card. It doesn't flow well at all. I'm just not a fan of it. But if you like Cryptic, you like Cryptic. You know, at the end of the day, some of the artwork looks really cool. I'm just not into it. But a lot of people are blowing this game up right now. But you have to remember that these games literally just entered their honeymoon phase, if you will. They literally just finished their Kickstarters not too long ago. And everybody's hyped right now. So everybody is buying into it. The same thing happened with Maelstrom. A couple months ago, Maelstrom was blowing up through the roof. Everybody was buying all the rare cards. Everybody was going ape over it. And now it's kind of crickets. The same thing can be said for Nostalgics. The same thing can be said for Grand Archive. Just with those games, they didn't put out a lot of stuff. Nostalgics just had their secret shards. That was about it. And anybody that wanted them could have got them. You know? And Grand Archive, for the longest time, outside of a couple sample cards here and there, if you were lucky to win them, they weren't really putting anything out. So that hype never really grew because there was no product out there for people to get their hands on, unlike Cryptic and Otherverse that has tons and tons of this stuff, right? So their honeymoon phases kind of came and went. We didn't hear too much about it. My personal opinion, they should have PR. They should be pushing themselves on social media right now and growing, even if they don't have a lot of product. I think they're doing themselves a massive disservice. But the reality is that's why we didn't hear much about them. It doesn't mean that the games are not going to survive. It doesn't mean they're not going to do good. 
But with these new games, they're kind of screaming out the top of their lungs out the gate. And that's not necessarily a good thing. And that's what I want to make clear in this video. Of course, I don't, I can't predict the future. I'm not Nostradamus. I don't know. Nobody truly knows. But you have to look at this in a lot of different perspectives. Some people may say, well, it's all hype right now, so that's a good sign. People are buying into this stuff. They're selling these cards for hundreds of dollars, like those riddle packs and stuff, which I don't understand what cryptic. I mean, it's a bunch of Swahili to me. I don't I don't want any of that crap. I don't like Japanese cards or any kind of weird language cards. Outside of like the ancient Mew, I've never been a fan of that junk. But a lot of other people want it for some reason. I don't know. I guess it's part of the lore and everything, but like you can decipher and stuff, but like I don't know. And then they try to say that like everybody was involved with that riddle box and everybody really enjoyed that event. From what I saw, I watched like four different content creators make a video on that riddle box. And basically, by the end of the video, they were completely lost and didn't really care. They're just like, I don't, I mean, these cards are kind of cool, but I don't know what this is. And they moved on. There was a group of people that actually went out their way and tried to solve it. And they pulled everybody together, which is cool. Don't get me wrong. I like the idea behind it. It's just the way that it played out, in my opinion, wasn't very successful. But again, I'm not here to bash cryptic or this or that. I'm just here to kind of state the way I see things. And right now we're in a honeymoon phase. You have all these cards out right now. So everybody's going ape over this stuff. It doesn't mean we're going to be at that point, you know, three, four, five months down the road. Unless they can keep pumping stuff out, which they may. They may continue to do that. And maybe it'll work for them. Again, I can't predict the future. But I'm just saying, just because they're doing very well right now doesn't mean anything. It just tells me that we're in a bubble. You know what I mean? And a lot of those games that are overinflated in the beginning are not going to be overflated in the end. They're just going to die out. They're going to fizzle out. They're going to blow their load early. And then the games that were more silent in the beginning will probably do better in the end. And I just want people to kind of open their eyes and realize that, that that could be the case. You know what I mean? Because too much, too early could be a bad thing. Just as much as not, not enough too early could also be a bad thing. You got to kind of balance it out, if you will. And right now it's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm backed on Grand Archive. I'm backed on Nostalgics. So I'm backed on those games. So maybe I'm a little biased when I say that, but that's just the way that I see it. And then again, some of these newer games that I just, I haven't touched. I touched Sorcery. I did buy a case of Sorcery. It was worth it to me because I got a sample pack with it, which I think will cover everything anyway. Um, but that game was just blowing through the roof. That was an anomaly in and of itself in a different way than MetaZoo was, just because so many people back that, and I think it's pulling in a lot of Magic players. So with that one, yes, there is something different about that one. I don't know how that's going to perform, but with a lot of these other games, I just there's no way that these numbers can sustain, and I feel like a lot of the hype is just going to die out. And if Maelstrom is not a good example of that, then I don't know what is, because Maelstrom has, has died down significantly. Um... And I mean, and you can also bring up like D spirits, even though I've, I was never a fan of D spirits and D spirits basically has fallen off a cliff. Um, I don't hear too much about it. Now I heard they had a really nice booth at Collecticon, which is wonderful. But after that set came out when the box is basically just tanked. And I mean, the creator is kind of a nut job. And I just, I thought a lot of the characters names were, were like just really silly, stupid names. And a lot of the, the designs of the characters, like having a butthole monster and stuff. It was very strange to me. I was never a fan of it to begin with, but yeah, you know, and then when you have a first set come out and literally after that first set comes out, like a few days later, you release and announce the next set. Like it's, that's just not the way to do it, chief. It's not the way to do it. So a lot of that's been dying down. Another one that I hear about and I haven't heard about recently, it, it, it's kind of dropped off as well, was a Korra. Um, there was a point in time, yes, where the boxes came out and there was some hype around it. And now I, I don't hear much about it. I guess if you're still part of like the discord and stuff, you're still part of that world. You're hearing about it, but like outside of it, it's like, I don't really see anybody. I saw a lot of people, whatnot was pushing it just like they're pushing cryptic. But at the end of the day, outside of that influence, outside of that push of people just trying to make money. Like, I don't, I don't hear too much about a core either. And I was never a fan of that because there's just too much Japanese crap on the cards. Just too much pseudo Japanese that, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the design. I think it's like a cheaper knockoff version of Pokemon. I'm just, I don't like it. But again, to each their own. Um, but again, it, to me, I think it's kind of falling off a cliff. I've also heard that boxes have kind of plummeted in that as well. Not that they haven't across the board. Even MetaZoo has come down significantly. But but I'm just saying. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen with a quarry either. But it just goes to show that a lot of these games are going to enter their honeymoon phases and they're going to pull out and then there's going to be this long period where everyone's just waiting for product. That's what's happening with Nostalgics and Grand Archive and some of these other games. People are just waiting for their product at this point in time, Maelstrom and such. And then we'll see what happens after the fact. But just because it's just blowing up right now doesn't mean that you have to back. It doesn't mean you have to FOMO and jump. It doesn't mean that it's going to succeed. 
You know what I mean? That's this is what I want people to walk away from with this video knowing. It doesn't mean to jump in just because of so much hype. If I learned anything from MetaZoo and all these other things, it's just don't buy in early because you're going to end up spending way more money than you should. Even if you really like the game and you want to pick up some stuff, you get it way cheaper later on, especially right now the way the economy is. You know what I mean? Prices are going to tank sooner than later. You know what I mean? This honeymoon phase ain't going to last forever. It's not. And if it does, I mean, they're just going to drain people's wallets even further. And then there's going to be fatigue. And again, a lot of these games are not going to be able to pull through that like MetaZoo has. Because they just don't have the backing. They don't have what MetaZoo has. MetaZoo is just a one-off special event. It's not probably going to happen again for a long time. So you have to realize that. And you can't use that to justify it. I mean, yeah, there's a chance that another one could happen. But it's, it's very unlikely. Let's just look at statistics. It's very unlikely. So let's not be fooled. You know, it's not spend our money foolishly and it's back to right things. And at the end of the day, I mean, make your choices. I'm not here to tell you to back one game or the other. I'm not. I'm not. You know what I mean? Back whatever you want to back. But I'm just making it clear, you know what I mean? Just because you see these crazy numbers right now and people selling cards like it's hotcakes doesn't necessarily mean anything. It could be very dangerous.